people, they don't value each other as much. When you're in a place like Copenhagen or any of these, uh, these any like whether it's Denmark or these places are not that big. Right. They're, they're big enough, but they're not that big. The United States is so big. It's so big. It's so big and it's so different. There's so much going on. So many cities everywhere. Everywhere is different. So many climates. 350, whatever the fuck it is, million people. Yeah, but if you see an American when you're outside of America, eh, you know they one of us. A lot of times. I mean, yeah. yeah they, a lot of times. It's, the lines are getting blurry now, though. How do you mean? You might think someone's American. You talk to them like, hello, mate. Like, oh, oh, right. Look at you, <laughs> motherfucker. With your backwards baseball oh, hat that, on. That is true. <laughs> yeah. I play overseas a lot now. And, you know, I used to do it when I was a kid. It was more challenging. This internet makes all the crowds kind of the same. It's, yeah. It, it, they know every reference. Yeah. And, and American culture is still a marquee culture. Like, you know, they know so much about our political lives. They know so much about our cultural lives. So much more than we would know about them Yeah, going over there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and on stage, like, I was doing a show in Tokyo. I'd never worked in Tokyo before. What was that like? If I took a picture from the stage and asked you where I was, you'd think I was playing San Francisco. Really? It was interesting. Yeah, some of the people who came didn't even speak English. They just wanted to see the spectacle of. Oh wow! Because they had heard of me. Oh wow! That must be wild. It's Netflix, man. Like, look, you get out in that world, Joe. You you're famous everywhere. You've never been to these places, but when you get there, they're gonna know you. Or there was a thing that happened to me years ago in London, where I was in a restaurant and I was kind of waiting for the table, and and when the lady. Go, she asked me my name. She said, what's your name? I go, David. She goes, well, this is David on the list. What's your last name? I go, Chappelle. And she looks up. And I look around and everyone's kind of looking. I could tell they had heard of me. But they didn't know that that was oh, me. Oh, right, right, right. It was right. that kind of thing. Yeah. This was this was after I quit the show, but not long after, like 05, 06. What did you do for those 10 years? I don't know how to shit. I learned a lot. I mean, but it was, it was a humble existence. I, you know, I... I had had young children, and uh, I was raising my kids. I was living a suburban life, uh, and then every once in a while, I get this feeling like I'm the funniest guy. I got to get out there, and I would like fly to Denver, do a week in Denver or something. And and that's when you would read. I was doing like these six hour shows. I perform like I was desperate for it. I lo I loved it. Yeah. And uh, at one point, I had done uh, one of these big comedy tours that Live Nation put together, that Oddball tour. And I did all right. I, I mean, I had, I had a good run. I, I wiped out in Hartford, and that was all over the internet. That was the first time that thing had happened to me. Uh, but for the most part, the tour went good. But it was a tough tour for me because it was a long show. I had to close it. You know, uh, my chops weren't as tight as they normally were. But I wouldn't. I didn't suck by any means. But you know, could have been better. Humbling. It was humbling. But it made me want to go back. And and the shows were like every show was like twenty thousand seats. They were like all these. What year was this around? Shit, I can't remember. Obama was president, maybe. <sighs> I don't know, eight, nine, ten. But you were there. you were famous for just showing up places. You would just fly in. That's places. the one. I that's when I started. I, I used to in the summer. I, I started riding motorcycles, which is like very uncharacteristic of me. But I loved it. I would and I rode. I said I'm gonna ride my bike across country, and I did. I cheated. I had a tour bus with me, a trailer, so if it rained or something, or if I just wanted to bail, I could. But I rode across the country, I, I, and, and I'd never seen America like that. We talk about how big it is and, and expansive, and, man, I saw all the little pockets. On a bike, you know, you really yeah. feel the environment. You see things. Um, and I would. I'd stop and play. One of my favorite birthdays was here in Austin. I, I, I was, I'd was never been to Austin, really, and I pulled up on 6th Street. I'd been to Austin, but I'd never seen Austin. Pulled up on 6th Street, it was my birthday. I was riding with the guy. He's like, what do you want to do for your birthday? And you know, at that time, I wasn't drinking or smoking or anything. Uh, I said, I want to do stand-up. And I found a bar. It was it was right around closing. And I saw the DJ packing up, and I said, can I use your microphone? And he recognized me, so he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went up there, and I just started talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, but it was just like, you know, teasing the bar staff as they're cleaning up, talking to patrons, and, you know, get it home fast, buddy, and all that shit. Right. And people laugh, and they kind of, it was like doing, I used to do street comedy in New York. It kind of reminded me of that, like building a crowd. And after a while, people 
stopped and listened. Now, now I'm not a tech savvy dude. Twitter had come out, and I guess people had started tweeting like, "Yo, it's just crazy." Dave Chappelle just in here ranting. Man, it might have took like an hour. That place was packed. <laughs> And I must have stayed on stage three or four hours. Wow. And, and you know, they, they closed the door. They locked the door because it was after hours. And I, I was in there killing it. it wow. Was the best birthday I ever had. 